Hello everyone, a few days ago Radiant Tale was released for the Nintendo Switch, an ultimate game that takes you on a journey through a number of cities where different dilemmas are played out. For those who appreciate story-driven games, Radiant Tale can be bought in Nintendo's eShop for $50, but for those who prefer physical copies, they can be purchased via Amazon or from the Axis website. In this review I discuss how Radiant Tale fares on the Nintendo Switch and whether it is worth buying. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, I review new games every week. So, in this story, we portray a girl named Tifalia. She gets to explore the world with a circus troupe. The underlying factors are that the country's heir to the throne is sick and can only get well by someone providing him with special flowers. So Tifalia's mission is to, together with other members from the circus, go around to different cities, put on shows and find flowers that can make the prince feel better. But after making it through the entire game, it struck me that the focus isn't really on the journey itself. The narrative is relatively streamlined and contains few surprises. One should not expect any extraordinary events that turn everything upside down. At least that was my experience playing through the game. But nevertheless, a number of important topics are raised which can be seen as the moral of the story. We are talking about betrayal, lack of trust, abuse of power, isolation, companionship, love, responsibility, anarchy, elitism, corruption, criminality, murder, slavery, and so on. It may seem messy, but the fact is that despite this, everything is put together in a smooth way because everything is divided into chapters. It is actually easy to follow what happens in the story. So much is about getting from point A to B, taking part in a problem, solve the task via dialogues, and then move on to the next location. Repeat everything. But what stands out in a positive way are the relationships. Tifalia meets a number of characters who all have different motives and intentions. And it's precisely these characters who are part of the circus troupe, who are the main highlight of the game. First, we have Belio, a rather buxom type who can transform into a dragon. Then we have Sephora, a young clown who plays an important role in certain parts of the game. Pashalia is also a young man who has close contact with something called water spirits. Then we have Eon, a man of incredible physical capacity. His past is shrouded in obscurity, but what is really hiding is something you, the player, have to find out for yourself. And finally, we have Genia, a rather unmotivated type who nevertheless fulfills an important role in the company. So, in summary, we have a relatively broad group of people with different strengths and abilities. My take is that Tifalia is the most grounded and quite ordinary. The others may sometimes behave eccentrically or deviant, which as a whole creates a certain dynamic throughout the story. And in my opinion, that is the number one asset of the game. The relationships and how they develop and change over time. And the opportunity exists to deepen relationships with specific individuals through unique conversations. Sometimes you get the option to choose which character Tifalia will hang out with. When you have made your choice, she has the chance to get closer to the chosen individual and possibly experience love, I think. It's reminiscent of a reputation system, where if you choose the right option, you get closer to the character you're currently hanging out with. And this is also where you can have the most influence, because the game is a visual novel that is basically freed from any kind of gameplay, with the exception of the choices that pop up to and from. As far as I know, there are no minigames or anything like that. If you're playing this game, you're doing it for the story, for the characters, for the relationships, and maybe because you appreciate Otome games in general. If you're going to take a look at what features are available, it is worth starting to talk about the language. All spoken communication is done in Japanese, but the text is translated in several languages. As I don't speak Japanese myself, it can actually be a bit deafening to hear the language constantly, hour after hour, mostly because I can't connect a voice and its expression. I would have really appreciated an English translation in order to get closer to the characters in a clearer way and understand how they feel in different situations. Now you have to rely completely on the text, but in the end, maybe it's my fault. Maybe I should learn Japanese. I don't know. 
There is also the option to save a game. There is an abundance of save files. It's also possible to rewind dialogues in case you miss something important. You can also use the Switch touchscreen, which I think is a great way to play this game. Laying down in the sofa, disconnecting all controls and just running through the story like a book. You can also listen through the game's music and relive the cutscenes you unlocked. There is also a gallery that adds new images as you progress through the game, so there are some fun additions that you can check out. But as I mentioned before, I think this game might suit those who want to experience a relatively streamlined story, where the interactions between the characters are the focus. This visual adventure prioritizes other things. But overall, I would still like to add that it feels like a finished product from the perspective that it includes most of what you can expect from a visual novel, with the sole exception that I have wished for a verbal English translation. Now we have to make do with the Japanese one. But if visual novels are your thing, then this might be worth a purchase. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, I review new games every week. Have a good day, see ya!